Okay, predator prey and energy transfer. And so let's look at this here. This is sometimes called a trophic pyramid or energy pyramid. And it's called this because it shows the trophic levels. Trophic means energy, and each of these is a different level. And so let's start at the bottom here. And in the bottom we have a little shrub growing. And I'll write shrub in case you can't tell from my drawing. And the shrub gets its energy from the sunlight, and it gets the raw materials from the ground, think, think nitrogen, and it puts that into growing a bigger shrub. And so of all the energy that the shrub gets from the sun, 10% goes to the next level. And the other 90% goes into the life of the shrub, growing the shrub. And then eventually, that energy is lost in the form of heat. And remember, in chapter 1, we talked about energy cycles through the system, not recycles. So it comes in from the sun, gets used, some of it gets passed on, and then it gets passed out back into the atmosphere into heat as the form of heat. And so now at our next trophic level, let's say we have a little bird. There's our little bird, and the bird eats the plant, and so it gets energy from, this, from the plant, and in doing its life, it grows from a little tiny bird in the nest there's a little bird with its mouth open, getting the food. And this bird lays eggs, so it's using energy to grow and reproduce. And 10% of the energy that it got from the plant goes to the next level. And the other 90% is used up in the life of the bird and then eventually leaves in the form of heat back into the atmosphere. And then at our next level, we have a weasel. And so here's our weasel. Here's our leg on the weasel. A weasel looks more like a lizard, but it's a weasel, trust me. And it gets energy from the bird that it ate, and of that, 10% gets passed on, and 90% gets used up, and then eventually lost in the form of heat to the atmosphere. So you can see it's a pretty inefficient system from that aspect. And then at the very top, we have our owl. There's our owl sitting on a branch with his owl eyes looking down at the weasel, getting ready to eat him. And the owl got 10% of the energy f of 10% of the energy of 10% of the energy and then it eventually uses up that energy and it's lost in the form of heat and back into the atmosphere and so what do we see here the pyramid the reason it's drawn as a pyramid is each space in the pyramid represents the biomass and the population so there's going to be a lot of shrubs to support the birds because only 10% of the energy the shrub got makes it to the next level right here and so there has to be essentially 10 times more of these than there are of these to support the population of these and then the population of the weasel has to be 10 times smaller otherwise there won't be enough energy to feed the weasels from the birds, since most of the energy is used up and lost, only 10% gets passed on. So each time we go up the pyramid or up the food chain, the population decreases dramatically because there's dramatically less energy 
each step along the way. If, there, if we had a spike in weasel population and this part of the pyramid got really big, let's say the owls died out and there was nothing eating the, the weasels, this population got really big, then they would deplete out these which would stop eating some of the shrubs, which would increase the population of the shrubs, and it would get out of balance. And um, so the, the predator population always has to be smaller than the prey population. Otherwise, the predator will run out of energy, and the food chain will not work. This also connects then to, so this is the, 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 re the cycling of the energy, but let's talk about the matter here. So the nitrogen, got absorbed by the plant using nitrogen fixation and bacteria from the nitrogen cycle. The bird ate the plant and in so doing got a little bit of nitrogen. And then the weasel ate the, the bird and got some nitrogen in the form of DNA and proteins. And then the owl ate the weasel and the nitrogen got passed along. And so the matter gets passed up the food chain as well. When this bird dies, or any of these things die, then remember the decomposer breaks that nitrogen, those proteins down, and releases the nitrogen back into the soil where it's absorbed again. And so the, the matter gets recycled as well. But none of the matter is lost, like the heat is lost, whereas the matter is, is always used up. Now let's talk about something called bioaccumulation. And in bioaccumulation, the nitrogen goes into the shrub. And it's spread out among all these shrubs, this huge population of shrubs. Now, the nitrogen isn't lost, unlike the heat is lost. And so all of that nitrogen now goes into a smaller population of birds. And so they have a higher concentration in their bodies. And then all of it goes into the weasels, and so they have even more of it compared to the rest of their bodies, and so on. And so for something like nitrogen, not a big deal. The bird is bigger than the shrub, and so it needs more nitrogen to have more proteins, and so it all works out. But if we have a toxin, like DDT, that gets into the system, then it's in a small amount in the shrub, or in the water plant in this case, it but in the bird, now it's a higher percentage. And so it makes the bird somewhat sick. And then as it goes up the food chain, it's in an even higher percentage because we have less weasels to absorb all of that toxin. And so as you go up the food chain, it accumulates in the bio biomass of the population. That's why it's called bioaccumulation, which as it accumulates into a higher percentage in the biomass, then it can make those organisms sick. And so the, the toxins actually get worse as they go up the food chain. They don't dissipate like you would expect them to do, because we think each step up the food chain, we're losing something. But in this case, it's accumulating all along the way.